open it up and see what happens. Steam turbine. Running pretty good. While I have this turbine apart, I'll show some more details. This is that nozzle arm. This is quarter inch uh, brake line. On the end here, I flattened that down a little bit so it's just a slot that the steam will spray out, so it's restricted. And before, when I was operating this turbine on air, I had a bushing in here for this hub, and I found out when that gets hot, it was starting to tighten up and bind up so it created a lot of friction. So I replaced that bushing with a sealed ball bearing, and that spins a lot more easily now, even when it gets hot. And this uh, bearing holder is just a makeshift thing I did. It's a uh, conduit uh, fitting, and this is just a electric metal electric box plate. And I drilled it out, and I fitted it in there, and this is just a JB Weld gasket seal and stuff. That's it, red junk around there. And I just have now an eighth inch pipe. Same valve. Otherwise, everything was pretty much the same as it was before and this is what I got working right now this is the setup I got the turbine back together and hooked up spins pretty easily and for my steam boiler I'm using a pressure canner I picked this up at a garage sale for five dollars these are always pretty handy because it's a pressure containment vessel. If you wanted to build something like that, it'd be pretty expensive, but when you get something for $5, it's a pretty good size, 116 quart. Got the stove cooking it. This is a small burner, so it's going to take a while. But it looks like it's already up to 5 pounds. I'll keep it under 20 pounds, probably keep it under 15 pounds, well out of the caution area. And then I got it hooked up to the turbine with just a eighth inch line. It's hot already. It's just compression fittings hooked up over to the valve. And what I'm going to do for the exhaust so it doesn't splatter all around in the room is I got a jar in here with the exhaust outlet stuck down in there. Uh, not advertising for on the border salsa, but that is good salsa. So the steam will condense through here, bubble out it. But at least it won't go all over the room. I'm getting some pressure. I don't think that's enough. Well, I can give it a turn and see what happens. Oh, that's hot. I gotta get a glove on. That's too hot to touch. Starting to spin a little bit. I think I need a little bit more pressure yet. Have to get a little bit more time. Probably up to 10 psi to start it. Well, the pressure is built up some more, so we'll open the valve and see what happens. There she goes.
just under 12 pounds. Something's chugging away there. Check underneath. The dynamic pressure, I don't know, maybe six pounds. A little under ten, I guess. Spinning pretty fast. Here it's bubbling away down there. Looks like it's wobbling a little bit yet, something's not quite balanced. And let's see. Pressure has dropped down about maybe seven PSI, eight PSI. This is the homemade steam turbine. This is kicking some steam out there. Huh. I'll give it another run now. Keep the, I guess maybe you can't see that, keep that dynamic pressure down a little bit because it's not under load. See how low you can go. Probably could maintain this probably. I don't know why that's so dark. Probably because that window is behind the there you go. door this way a little bit. Crank it up just a little bit. I guess we are dropping on pressure too. Getting going there pretty good. I can slow it down. Well, that's the system running. <laughs> it's kind of fun, kind of like one of those steam engine toys you get and put together. Run with sterno fuel. A little different. This is probably actually cheaper though if you had to buy one of those steam engine sets and boilers. It's maintained about 10. That's what it's running on, I can't tell. Probably maybe five 
PSA maybe? I don't know how accurate that uh, pressure gauge is at that low pressure. It's a brand new gauge. That one's a brand new gauge. Condensing low set steam. It's a dynamic pressure. Kind of dark. Let me get it later. I pinched the ends of the nozzle down a little bit so it's a smaller opening and I can get the dynamic pressure up higher now. Okay, about 12 psi. Do over here. It's under 14 maybe. Dropping a little bit. Starting to wobble my old table a little bit. <laughs> Spinning down. It is condensing the steam because I did have it down to that uh, mark right there. Flashing up out of there now. Hmm. Fun, fun. Decreasing the size of the nozzle opening did help as it increased the dynamic pressure operating of the turbine. I don't have a pressure relief valve on this system, but I was keeping a pretty close watch on it. And overall, I think it was pretty successful. So I hope this video was inspiring to all the experimenters out there. And thanks for watching. I'm just winding it down now. Just a few pounds of pressure on it. <clears throat> Condensed a lot of steam. Flame, I turned the stove off. So that's, a, I think that one's pretty accurate. So you got just a little over 5 psi. And the valve is fully on. So that's probably about the same one. Just about done. steam.
Well, it didn't take long to condense all that into water. Not enough pressure to turn it. I'm just doing that with my hand. That's off. Look at all the water. Hmm. 